This will not be a shouting ceremony. Men can do a lot of things. I mean, all you have to do is look around at the global news. And you see persecutions of Christians. You see malicious disposals of life. I'll say it kindly. And you see people who are behaving unseemly. Technologies and access to information. Software that is intentionally created for our children to redirect their behaviors, to entertain them. Access to all types of information, some of which is not good. The influence is not good at all. But yet, we sit by idly and we watch. Our children access to other cultures, their ways of life. Some which do not know God have never really experienced no interest in having a relationship with God or anything like God. Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace and Instagrams. They have access to Xboxes and any other type of boxes that they desire. I'm not sure of all of the names available to them. Live and inanimate chat rooms. Social information is being dispersed through little hubs on the internet where they can meet and they interact with other people with similar interests. Then there are the apps to teach you things. Where is the end to the interaction with our children, with our society? And the imaginations of people. If men can imagine, history has proven that the things that are created in the minds of men will someday be a reality. And we know that to be true. I remember a little program called The Jetsons. And it seems to me that everything that was in The Jetsons, we have all those things at our disposal. But we can't somehow seem to believe that the Creator of all things God and his son Jesus Christ will somehow return to this earth. Now there was a time when I had questions about that in my youth but in my approaches to understanding uh, Christ and the second coming I have been led by prophets Jeremiah says in 23 5 behold the days come. And I will raise unto David a righteous branch. A king shall reign and prosper. And shall execute judgment. There will be a righteous kingdom. And we must prepare ourselves for this righteous kingdom. We can't go around every day of our lives continually knocking the children of God, saying anything we want to say to the kingdom of God to satisfy our own purposes. We can't continue to abuse the children of God, saved or unsaved, his creation. We can't continue to abuse his creation. Without any remorse. Because we're taught to love everyone. Simply because God himself is love. But we have become, many of us, and I will not include myself in that anymore. Because I have, I'm on a path, I think, to, to try to... to Redirect my life. So I want to be in the pathway that God left for me. The pathway that he led. He left a pathway for us to follow. And so I am not trying to say I've always done everything right. I've done wrong and I confess my sins. 
but my understanding at that time was very poor. So now my goal is to reconcile myself. A conversion, if you will. To what is right. And from what I see and what I read, God really wants us to know this. His intention is to set the Lord Jesus Christ up as king over this earth. The Bible tells us, and we know from reading our history books, that we have had numerous kings that were set up and they fell down all throughout history. But the perfect king, perfect king, is for his promised kingdom. And so we have to believe that if we have a perfect king for his perfect kingdom, and if that person is Jesus Christ, he has to what? To reign over that kingdom, and the kingdom shall be here on earth. So that means that he has to what? Come back. We as Christians must believe that we cannot secretly say they it's a code book or a fairy tale. For uh, it's just a book for a people in persecution is what some people say. Well, but it's not just in Revelation. It's throughout the Bible. Is a promise made to Jesus Christ, the King, the coming King, and his kingdom. During the 150th anniversary at Shiloh, Dr. William Epps from Second Baptist in Los Angeles, California, said that, A scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be, Genesis 49.10. Scepter was a staff adorned with carvings handed down from father to son. It became the emblem of authority. Shiloh or Shiloh, he for whom it is laid up. The peaceful, the peacemaker, until he comes. And he's coming with a scepter in his hand. Now that also speaks to people who set themselves up as rulers. As counsel against the people of God. The peace of God. These people have no belief in Christ. These people believe that they are, right now, the rulers of the world in their little positions, their little places uh, on the wall, their little spots, if you will, and I won't talk about anybody's church. But they believe that this is my rulership, I'm king here, and you no, know you're not. You will pass, and another one will come behind you. If God doesn't come first, Christ doesn't sin, doesn't come back to the earth first. So he shall be the son of the highest. He only is great. Only Christ himself will sit on the throne of David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Kingdom. Hallelujah, shall have no end. His kingdom shall have no end. Wherever you are. Whomever you are and however you are. In the name of Jesus, please know this. Your grain of sand of a kingdom shall come to an end. For we must align ourselves with the thinking that God intended us to have. 
as leaders, as Christians, as teachers of his word. Do not be so bold as to attack some other minister's doctrine or his method of teaching or his approach to teaching and understanding of the Bible minister but I'm going to ask this question of everyone who might be listening to me do you really believe that Christ is coming back are you teaching your sheep that Christ is coming back Do you think that there will be a righteous kingdom without Christ? My purpose is, in a gentle nudging, to impress upon you that our objective is to become more responsible Christians. As we move toward or go into the age of peace and prosperity, when that age of peace and prosperity comes, guess who's coming back? Christ himself is coming back to reward his church. Why am I telling you all this? What is my purpose for telling you all this? Well, I've seen some things. Because I've seen some fantastic things happen here. And I've seen some things happen... That made me tremble. Tremble in fear. I've trembled. I've cried over the things that happened in this world in this past week. And just today there was a bombing in Nigeria. I've seen a mass murderer released in South Africa. People were blowing themselves up to make their points. We've seen the crumbling of the towers in New York, the Twin Towers. We've seen people bomb the Pentagon. We've seen so many catastrophes when it comes to the weather and tornadoes and hurricanes. And we've seen awful train wrecks and plane crashes and all of these things, I believe, are warnings that Christ will come again. He will return. And I think it's Camo said that men and women are meandering through the world as if sin means absolutely nothing. He also said, and he's from Texas, he also said that there was a time that he remembered when you know, you could walk down the street and see a child doing something wrong and you could correct that child without fear of being ushered into domestic court. He also said that he could leave, someone could leave a wallet in the grocery store and go back and pick it up hours later and all the money would be in it and, you know, be gladly returned to that person. He said that he could leave his house and the doors would stay open all day long with no lock and no key. You could leave your car unlocked in the parking lot and nobody would bother with it. Try to do that today. People are so quick. But men think they are so quick. Christ is quicker. Jesus, these things, some of these things are so fast. You blink your eye, you miss them. Christ is faster than that. God himself is faster than that. Happy one moment, sad the next. Rich one moment, poor the next. Clear skies one moment, tsunami the next. Christ is terrible. Christ is even more terrifying. He can be terrifying. He can be calm and peaceful or he can be a terror. In the blink of an eye. He can demolish this entire creation. Your strongest weapon is not strong enough for 
God himself because he created it. It's in your head, but he created it. And so I guess I got a little off track. But I was trying to make a point that you're not smarter than God himself. And my father and uh, my stepfather used to say, uh, there's some confused people in the world. They want to make you think you're confused. But the Prince of Peace has told us and admonished us that there will be no real peace until he gets back, until he establishes this peace himself. So, Israel rejected Christ. And the Romans uh, destroyed Jerusalem. But all of this is a work of Satan. 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 And, I, and I'm not trying to take up the, uh, uh, the view of anybody else. But it's something that I feel in my spirit. You know, someone said you're trying to be like Amos. Trying to be like Amos. I'm not trying to be like anyone. I'm just trying to understand what it is that Christ wants me to understand and what's what he wants me to say. This is a promise not for me. This is a promise it's a promise that Christ made to his church. And so, um, you have to believe it for yourself. I can't make you believe it. I can't. Be, I can't make you believe that uh, it, it, this troublesome period or this great tribulation that we are enduring now uh, will have no deliverance. I don't know whether you've been born again. I don't know whether you're truly born again. But 1 Corinthians says this. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the Lord himself, says 1 Thessalonians, shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now you're talking about terrifying. Think of that. A shout. Not the shout that you're thinking about uh, someone calling you from across the room. A shout. A heavenly shout. With the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. First, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And we will ever be with the Lord. Wherefore we comfort one another with these words. But. I just want to say to you. That the evil communications that you put forth. And the, the horrible things that you do to your brother man. Are not going unnoticed. Someone is watching. You're not too quick. You're not too slick. You're not too smart. And you're not king. You're not ruler over anything. You're in a temporary place. Then in the blink of an eye, Christ can remove you from that place. Because he's going to destroy the wicked. And his true saints will reign with him. His true saints, the true believers, will reign with him. And, you know, I, I am a, I'm a true believer that wickedness is going to have to be defeated. And righteousness will be revealed. And I've written this in a song. But my, what I was trying to say is Christ is treading upon the grapes of wrath. 
wickedness has to be defeated. And a better word came that righteousness will be revealed. But Christ himself will be king of kings and lord of lords. And the king of kings will reign. And that's my word for you. You don't have to believe me, but I'm just asking you, will you be ready? Are you trying to get ready? Or are you just trying to prepare dinner? Are you trying to find the next best suit, the next pair of shoes, or the next best church, or the biggest and the best church? And you want to look good for everybody. But are you good? Looking good and being good are two different things. You get look good, we look good to everybody, we got everything in place, and we're doing this exactly right, and we're doing this according to the book, and everybody can look at us and say that we are in order. In order. It's quote, in order stuff. In quote. In order. In quote. Decency and in order. Doesn't quite mean that. I think what it means is that men were the heads of, of the church and women followed. That was the order they were talking about. From That's my understanding. But if you're doing things in order and you're doing all of your little rituals the way they're supposed to be done. And God will despise your rituals and God will despise your offerings. It doesn't matter if you're tithing on time, in time, and every time. God doesn't care how much money you put into church. If you are not his true follower, he will despise your offerings. And it's been proven time and time and time and, and time again. And that's exactly why I pray every time I put my money in the offering. You know, I'm not saying I'm a sinner. Because we're all sinners by nature. We're born in this world of sinners. But Jesus said we have to be born again. Alright, and that's John 3 and 3. Any known and then the unknown sins. I'm confessing them right now. And I want to be saved. I want to be right. I want to be whole. When he returns, I want to be whole and I want to be ready. Because I truly believe that he's coming back. Before you influence other people to accept Jesus Christ, you have to really and truly believe that you accept him as your Savior. It's not a joke. It's for real. Do you accept Jesus Christ and all of his teachings? That's the important question that you need to ask yourself. Joke is for real. So, I pray that you will come to know Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that I know any more about Christ than you do. Because there are none righteous, according to Romans 3 and 10. Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory. Romans 3 and 23. But, we are saved through, through grace and faith. Which is a gift from God. And Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, Lest any man should boast. So I'm not boasting. I'm, I'm thankful for the grace that Christ has given me. I'm grateful for the faith that he's given me. Faith really translates into confidence in God. The faith and the confidence and the grace that Christ has established in me. I'm grateful for that. May you find yours. Amen. And the peace of Christ.